Hello and welcome to Castle of Horror, the show dedicated to horror movies and awesomeness. This week, we have a look at the 1976 film Grizzly. This is episode 424. Bear in mind, if you haven't seen today's movie, we're going to be talking about it. No! Sorry. No! Sorry. Sorry. No! It took me a second. We're going to be discussing it from the perspective of horror fans who have seen it. So warning, spoilers ahead. From Denver, Colorado, I'm your host, Jason Henderson, publisher at Castle Bridge Media, home of the Castle of Horror Anthology. With me from Austin is Tony Sabaggio, lead singer and bassist of the band Deserts of Mars, and lead guitarist of the band Rise from Fire. Say hello, Tony. Howdy. Howdy. Also in Austin, Mr. Drew Edwards is the writer-creator of the long-running underground comic Halloween Man, which you can find at Global Comics. He is a Best Writer Ringo nominee, Austin Chronicle, Best of Austin Award member, a member of the Penn America Fellowship, and the guy who laughed at Bear in Mind. Say hello, Drew. Well, I did that because I'm such a maverick, you see. (laughs) Listen to me, Kittredge. Okay. Um, All right. Grizzly also... Uh, apparently known in some markets as U.S. Uh, uh, in the U.S. as Killer Grizzly, is a 1976 American horror thriller film. I would say it's kind. Of, it's an eco horror. It's also, in a sense, a disaster film. Directed by William Girdler, out of a park ranger's attempts to halt the wild rampage of an 18 foot. 2,000 pound man eating grizzly bear that terrorizes a national forest, uh, having developed a taste for human flesh. However, a drunken hunting party complicates matters. The film stars Christopher George, Andrew Prine, and Richard Jekyll. This is three manly men making up our, our trio of intrepid expeditioners at the end. Widely considered a Jaws ripoff, Grizzly used many of the same plot devices as the shark predecessor, which have been a huge box office success. But I want to point out, This movie was a massive success. It was the uh, most successful independent horror film of its time, only to be surpassed a few years later. And I can't remember by what right now. I'll have to look up that. I I want to say they meant Halloween might be it. Yes, yes. Halloween. I have to interrupt you to say that you got so excited about talking about the bear movie that you didn't introduce me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and terrible. finally, so just, that's, just, that's I'll unbearable. Just ah, that's you took my unbearable. line. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I feel no, I'll just terrible. have to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Julia. This is Julia. <laughs> also in Denver, color commentary from Julia Guzman of Guzman Immigration of Denver. I blame the script. I'm looking right at it, but there's a bunch of it's my fault, but I was reading and I read terribly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's I really, okay. I really am. Do you want me to re-edit it so that nope, you, you nope, come in? Nope. All, all good. So everybody bear, gets the, to know. The unbearable excitement is fine. <laughs> the, the unbearable oh, lightness. I sense a the theme, and I'm liking it. I don't know if everybody else will, but I like it. Oh, oh my God! Here. All right, let's get our opening thoughts about this film. Uh, we'll go Drew, Julia, Tony, and then um, and then I'll take us into our first topic. So, uh, Drew, I mean Grizzly, what are your thoughts? Um, I, you know, I was saying this on our 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 group thread earlier. Um, Orca, which we did last week, might be a more ambitious film and a technically better film than this one i really enjoy watching this movie um i i find it very entertaining even though it is um pretty much beat for beat jaws but on land and with a different animal um i i love the setting like i i I find the scenery in this movie to be quite beautiful to look at um you know, I, I, I th- you know, I will always enjoy the let's get a team together to go kill the monster narrative, yeah. you know, like I, I'm, I'm old fashioned that way. And, um, you know, like even the cheesiness at times is just kind of um, endearing in this. So I, 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 I really enjoy this movie. Um, one of the things I, 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 when we, when we, when we talk about it, I, there is some stuff you know, regarding the bear that bugs me that this movie is called <laughs> Grizzly. And we will, uh-huh. we will, we will, we will get into that when we, we, we talk about the bear itself, but um, the movie itself really, really fun. Um, you know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, two, two for two with fun seventies um, killer animal flicks yeah, right man. now in this retrospective. Excellent. 
Thank you. Julia, what about you? First of all, did you find this movie endearing? Did you dig this? I did. Um, I, I love, you know, we live in Colorado because I, because we love the mountains and we love, you know, so just, I, I, I thought I agree with Drew that it's just so aesthetically beautiful, um, the setting and everything. Um, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really fun, you know, variation on, on Jaws um, as, a, as um, Joe Bob Briggs said, it should have been called Claws, which of course there is eventually another movie that's called Claws, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's gory. Um, so I don't love that. And yet it's but, a PG. Yeah. Which is really Yeah. Weird. That's, that's shocking. That makes really no sense harsh, at all. Really harsh. For, it's just very, very gory um so but you know yeah i think it was it was entertaining for sure there's there, it's very flawed for sure but it's uh it's fun thank you very much uh tony what about you um yeah i mean i i like it uh i think i i'd seen it at least once before or parts of it i believe actually but this is the first time i sat down um you know it's it's funny it's I often, you know, as I, again, while I was thinking, it's, it's grisly in both its gore. Yeah. With an S as well as it's grisly with, and, you know, Ooh. with as the bear. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's the most, it's probably the most Jaws beats of any of the eco-terror stuff that's around from this time. Like, not even Piranha kind of follows Jaws. Like, Orca, I, you think Orca was closer, but this is, like, beat for beat. Yeah. Um, I like that the score, like <laughs> the score and the scenery that, that you're talking about also kind of makes it feel like Mutual Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Yeah. Like just there's that timbre and like the, the choice of instruments and the way it plays out. Just that was the perfect because, you know, this is still of a time when you Wild Kingdom was like, I think coming on like Sunday nights. Oh, yes. If I, and uh, yeah, right before Disney, right before but, the wonderful world of Disney. Yes, exactly. So like the flavor of that score kind of brought me back to my really like really 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 young years. Um, that was you know I thought that was kind of neat. It, it's the straight like sometimes the the score isn't as dark as what's going on or the, but like that again I think that's part of why it felt so Wild Kingdom. Um, you know it's not it's not a perfect movie but I think it's like it's a fun watch and you know I I actually went back. Uh, because Drew reminded me uh, at the Joe Bob, uh, you know, version of this, and you know when he's talking about how how it showed, like it was licensed, like you know, played at night on TBS and yeah. I think it was at ABC. It also has a flavor. Some of the cuts really do feel like almost the T made for TV movie. Again, yes. that's not a knock. It's just this this there's a language to it that we've talked about before that sometimes felt a little like that, and I thought that was fascinating. Thank you very very much. I, you know, it's so funny. Um, it is, it is an endearing movie. I, 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 I sort of enjoyed watching all of this. I want to talk for a moment about the rating, which I find fascinating, because Jaws, which came out in 1975, was a PG movie, despite the marijuana use, despite the topless swimmer, despite the the um, legs and heads floating around and 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 everything. So, a super violent movie, Jaws, PG straight up pg and then this movie 1976 you got arms and legs flying around you got you got a little bit of toplessness very very little and then, a little kid getting its his leg yeah, torn off yeah the kid yeah, with mean, his, oh, his limbs sure. torn off uh no Bad. way in hell this would be pg rated today it wouldn't even be a pg-13 i don't think i think this would be an r but here's what i think was happening there were two forces moving in different directions at the time this is of course before about 10 years later we'd get pg-13 for the first time to answer this conundrum but at the time the mpaa was mainly concerned with putting the r rating on uh sexy movies and these movies might have a little bit of nudity but not much and you know so you but basically you can say they have a little bit so first of all setting aside the fact that that's bullshit that you don't give a rated r rating for gore um the fact that you could say it has a little bit of nudity but but not more not not enough to not make it pg <laughs> it's so different from today like it is different from today. you're absolutely right well, different from today. i think at yeah. least initially you were allowed a degree of of nudity and what i believe one F bomb in a uh, in a PG thirteen movie. I could be wrong. So somebody I, I, who I don't I don't know about that. But this was PG. 
This was this. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. But PG thirteen didn't exist. Didn't exist. Right, right. That's right. And so you have toplessness in this, but that's it. So back then, you know, if something was, if something like included a sex scene, you're more likely to get an R rating. But blood, the crazy thing is, we've never been that. it, It. this is the sad part of our culture. We've never been that squeamish about blood. Um, but a lot of people pushed against that. And that's why about 10 years later, you get the PG-13 rating. But it is fascinating to me that this and Jaws are PG rated films. In other words, in theory, a family film that you would bring the family to and anybody, you know, uh, you know, and the kids, as long as there were parents with them. And, and I think the violence in this, like, I'm not saying Jaws isn't a violent movie. It is. But the violence in this one feels a lot more exploitative. Like, the oh, fact yeah. That, the fact yeah, that mean, you have a horse literally get decapitated on screen was... by a grizzly bear, you know, is unexpected. Well, I can't think you said that yeah. was like... Yeah, they they really, you know, they take their time on it. This one in many ways, even though Jaws is a is an adventure kind of almost uh, like I say like a family adventure, like a classic Hollywood adventure. This feels more like a men's novel, you know, like a like the kind of you can just picture the painting on the cover of this if this were a novel, right? Well, the, not not for nothing, the Neil the Neil Adams poster is pretty awesome yes oh absolutely thank you for for pointing out that neil adams did the poster Mm -hmm. of this but i mean if if it were if it were like a novel that you would buy in paperback i guarantee you grizzly would be in this big red font and you'd have this you know you'd have mike the park ranger with his rifle like climbing over a rock you can just see it right he'd look like like matt bolin i that's that's i don't know i think the poster would still be the paperback poster i'll be like that yeah you have like a a, a blind babe although it's funny uh, jason you mentioned red font saying grizzly that's exactly what the poster has that's true (laughs) <laughs> uh so this is so l- let's get into this now one thing i find really interesting the movie begins with uh don stroder who is played by andrew prine so andrew prine well-trained actor a member of the actor's studio um and as we will see later gets a writing credit on the this movie anyway he's droning on in a helicopter establishing that we are in an enormous national park in georgia where the um, indians wandered around but after him we go to a bunch of setup scenes with characters that we will basically never meet again in the film i mean the, not so much with the rangers but but our main guy mike kelly played by by the manly man christopher george uh he it, he has this new girlfriend named Allison. She's a photographer and a researcher and she's also hassling her dad who runs the resort restaurant and she's wanting him to 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 you know change his prices and get with the times and and make more money and blah blah blah. A lot of time spent on this and what I found fascinating is um it's not like it's those are scenes from a different kind of movie because you got to have setup scenes. It just so happens that none of this comes back. I just yeah, thought that was the guy, weird. The, the dad just vanishes and he's kind of replaced by the politician, which they're the yes. same, they serve the same function. That's right. You could have kept them as the same. And that leads me to think, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if they shot way more and they cut it down. I, don't, I, 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 or, or if they lost the actor that played the, the dad the restaurant. Yeah. The guy, the dad. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. It, it, it's it's the the weirdest thing watching that because they're like, oh, I, I, guess... I think some of that stuff must be on the the cutting room floor too. Like, I, I I kind of wonder if there were more scenes about the restaurant and maybe there was like a subplot about the restaurant, but then yeah. they realized like nobody going well, to see yeah. this movie cares about that. Yeah, right? because because to 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 jump ahead a little, if you don't mind, Jason. Yeah, all you want. Um... Yeah. <laughs> The fact is that what you have with Jaws is that you have the summer season and the super comet popular season of people coming. And so, and if you're going to close the beach, you're going to lose all of your revenue for the year because that's where you make most of your money. Here, they, they say at the beginning, this is the this is what the whole point of that restaurant scene is, is that he goes, um, okay, just because it's the end of the season doesn't mean we don't have to work. And she's like, oh, you didn't get your bills paid. Like there's all those unpaid bills. Um, there's not going to be any more money coming in. So what's the point of keeping everybody in, like not closing down the 
the the mountain. Like it should, they should kick everybody out because it's the end of the season. Why does anybody need to be there except for the people <laughs> hunting the bear? So that that whole thing just was crazy to me because it would have made more sense if it was the beginning of the season and then the, that resort guy is like, I've got all these bills to pay and I can't be kicking everybody out. But it's whatever. Right. I feel like as 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 they are fond on saying on pitch meeting, it's so the movie can happen. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like if you get rid of all the campers, you don't have any victims, and if you don't have victims, you don't have a horror movie. That's right, so. but what I'm saying is they should have made it earlier. Like they should have made it a time of year, except for the fact that they wanted to film in the fall for some reason. They should have made yeah. it a time of year when there was going to be more people, so and then kept the resort so that he's getting people in the resort. Anyway, I'm just I, I or, just, or just make up an event like it's yeah, fall. exactly, make up an event exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. like like uh, um, what is it, frozen? Oh, dead guy. I don't know, frozen dead guy oh, days or whatever. That's yeah. a really yeah. gr- great idea. Yeah, you're right. That would have solved one of the problems. I mean, look at us trying to solve it. Could have been, it could have been Oktoberfest or something, and you could yes. have had a, a bunch of guys in kilts doing log tossing. Right, and, and all the bears are supposed to be in hibernation, and it's going to be fine. And then, yeah, blah, blah, blah. That, that, Actually, yeah. let's remake Grizzly and set okay. it during Oktoberfest. And I, solve I'm into this, this problem. Yeah. So I just want to point bear out. bear was like grumpy that he wasn't being allowed to hibernate, which is funny. Anyway, go. <laughs> well, um, Roger Corman made a film in 1978, that's two years after this, that has a very similar plot, except for it's not a bear, it's an avalanche. But they solved this problem. Rock Hudson plays the guy who runs the resort and the mountain. In other words, they just combine it all, essentially, so that you don't you don't have to deal with with the difference between the park supervisor and the and the and the the resort runner. I I I'm just fast. I I th- Drew. I think you nailed it. I think there's stuff on the cutting room floor that you would have gotten back to. Um, okay, so. Tony, as you pointed out, this is an extremely well. Actually, can you explain this to us? Uh, like, like, um, you know, you, you you can go you can go as deep as you want, but but like at a high level, what does it mean? That what do you mean when it say it's very 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 structured like Jaws? Well, I mean, you have this the politician who doesn't want to close the area. You have the the team getting together. You have a naturalist explorer. Um, you know all that stuff. And yeah. again, uh, you know, I, I feel weird. Like I noted all this stuff, but then when I rewatched the Joe Bob version, he says all these things too, right? Like, in fact, yeah, he has, tip of the hat to Joe Bob. Yeah, he, 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 he has a chart, so I don't want to be accused of like having. But but yeah, all the like as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, I mean, th- there's a speech. There's a, you know, how it attacks people. Um, the kind of titillating, you know, waterfall scene is like the the swimming out scene. There's a there's a there's child endangerment. Like it's despite the fact the writers say they didn't that that wasn't yeah. the case. And you know, sometimes things happen. But wow, what a weird world we live in. If 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 it wasn't that, you know, if they're if they're for real, if they're and I, you know, I hate to accuse anybody of lying, but uh, if they actually just went, hey, we made this thing and then. Yeah, saw, Listen, I know positive, how it could be like, true. Oh, crap. I, like, I'll tell you exactly how it could be true that that they supposedly wrote it without thinking of Jaws. They could very well have written it as a monster on. There's plenty of monster on the loose movies. I mean, the, for one, for sure, when but, you guys, when Drew talked about getting the team together to fight, first thing I thought about was the attack of the eye creatures. You know, from the right, 60s, but the right? beats, the beats, yes, when they happen are so similar. Exactly. You can't, you know, get off the. Well, beach. both things, both things it, can be. It's true. They could have come up with sure. the concept and then re and then written it with Jaws in mind once they actually were writing it. I, I exactly. definitely, whether or not the script, the genesis of the script happened before Jaws is not relevant to me at all. I <laughs> I I a hundred percent believe that once Jaws came out, there a, a light bulb went over the head of the, you know, whoever ended up being the money people behind this movie right. and the director and everything. And they're like, hey, let's do Jaws with a different animal. What else is scary? Bears are scary. Let's yeah, do a sure. movie about a scary bear. And, and, you know, frankly, honestly, I mean, I think Jaws is a scarier movie, but I actually find conceptually a bear to be scarier than a shark because a shark, you can very easily escape by just not going into the water. A bear can chase you down. (laughs) I was actually going to say that that what the fascinating part of this is like how much, you know, how much this covers like you. Yeah. Okay. I I won't go to the beach. Like you're in the woods. You're just in the woods. You're right. I agree. 
Apparently, you don't even have to be in the woods. You could be in a in a cabin. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 a cabin or a you know ranger state in this one ranger station at your oh, house. Oh yeah, you could be at a fire you know, tower. Um, so you know all of that stuff like is is true. I do agree, you know, because we're to your point though, Drew. Both when you're shooting and editing, you make those same those choices too, right? It's not just yeah. the script and timing and everything else. Like, how you pace things also like that's that's what really feels kindred spirit for better or worse you know i think it's it's fine that it's like jaws to me like i i you know that kind of is part of what makes this a little bit because jaws is as much as i think it's a scary movie it's kind of a comforting movie to me Mm -hmm. and this kind of you know jason talks about the talked about this when we were doing um you know, when we're talking about one of the Friday the 13th, yeah. you know, I am sort of okay, you know, and, and maybe this, this, you know, means I'm less sophisticated than others. I don't know, but I'm sort of okay with watching the same movie over and over with minor differences. Yeah. Um, as long as it's entertaining. I've and been known this, to say exactly that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's- and, and this isn't like, I don't care about the similarities of Jaws because I'm not, bored watching this movie and it's different enough and maybe right. that's maybe that's me may, making excuses for no it. i think um, i think in fact watching the same movie over and over with subtle differences you start to enjoy just cataloging the differences which is super it's why we watch james bond movies it's the same movie over and over um okay so i want to talk about the bear and i want to talk about how bears kill people so I have some understanding of that. Uh, Drew, I, I, it seems like you wanted to talk about that a little bit. I get, Let me start with this. I listened to a few minutes of a bear attack audio recently, and I had to turn it off because it was deeply disturbing. And I was like, I, I can't listen to all of this. A bear apparently will go at you, and it's, 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 it's terrible. So uh, how is this... The way the bear attacks people in this movie, is that at all related to how bears attack people or is a bear more likely to bite through your stomach? What What, what is a bear going to do? Um, Most likely a real bear attack. A bear is going to run you down and before eating you, he would probably bat you about with his claws, which mm. would... I don't know if you've ever seen a survivor of a bear attack, but it's not a pretty sight. Like they basically have indentations in their Mm. flesh from how deep those claws go in. Like Mm. a bear is uh, an enraged bear is basically the, the, the closest, uh, you know, people always think I'm joking when I'm saying this, but I'm not Mm. Um, the closest real life equivalent to a werewolf. Mm. like it's it's this huge thing that can just bat you around and you have no hope of outpowering it like bears are some of the most powerful predatory animals on earth they're definitely the most powerful mammalian predators in the united states um you know so the, the the thing is though that this movie does and it's it, it, keep in mind this is an exploitation movie bears don't usually go out of their way to attack humans um you know it's kind of the same thing with sharks you know sharks mm. don't really go out of their way to eat people bears don't really go out of their way to eat people you know bears tend to eat other other things you know like generally speaking if a bear attacks a human being it's because they were provoked because you know you, they think you're too close to their young they think the, you're somehow endangering their territory or, I mean, if you're a hunter, you took a shot at him. And, uh, you know, so, the, you know, this is, a, this is a monster movie and they've made a bear a monster. So it does some definitely pretty unnatural sure. things. What's weird about it is then they choose to include some behaviors that I think, you know, only people who are into zoology would know about, like... Like what you were talking about before, you know, we started recording the fact that he he kills what or appears to have killed one of our main characters, Richard Jekyll. Yeah, yeah, buries him and leaves, which yeah. is a hundred percent something. Bears will bear will bury 
you know, meat, let it fester and, you know, come back and eat it when it's been softened up by rotting. Mm. Um, you know, so there's, there's, there's some quote as we're, we're, we're fond of saying truth in television there, yeah. but, um, you know, it's, it's weird that they include that because most people watching the movie don't know that. And it's just kind of comes across as strange. So well, I, I, it was pretty strange. Like, and I, of course I joked, Oh, you're buried. <laughs> but like, but like uh, you know, it's, it's weird in the cadence of it. Right. Because it all kind of happens in at, all at once. Very quickly. You, you that know, was a very like, strange choice. Like past. super strange. Yeah. Yeah. So it feels, if you don't know that that's a thing, you're just like, is the, you know, it almost looked like at first, like he was burying him so that they couldn't see him from the chopper. <laughs> like he's a super well, duper, super smart bear. Well, I, right. it's not, I mean, throughout the movie, the bear is, is burying food. So that's weird. What I think is, is, so we can debate this a little bit. Um, dramatically, so yes, it totally makes sense. He buries Richard Jekyll and then Richard Jekyll wakes up and then Richard Jekyll gets killed because he doesn't escape. So that's kind of a bummer. But it seems usually this is a trickaroo that happens in a hollywood movie where you think somebody's dead and then you come back to them and like in other words this would have been a great opportunity to have richard jekyll survive here and then sacrifice himself later it, or, yeah. or, or, or survive right. and then kill the bear when the bear is about to kill somebody else like right that. it feels yeah. so unsatisfying for him to almost die get buried and who knows and maybe that was the point maybe they were yeah. kind of like double the pain but yeah i know. mean yeah. i guess it, it, yeah uh, so, so if, yes. if, if if i may another thing yeah. that i think is odd as somebody who is you know a a, a, a fan of fearsome beasts as yeah. i as i often say um this same character that we're talking about the bear expert at one point yeah theorizes that th this is a a prehistoric bear right. from the plasticine era that has somehow survived uh i the the, the you know the the he uses the um the greek name um Arctogdis prestinus which is a a giant short-faced bear okay um which is a real species of bear not a type of grizzly bear so <laughs> The thing that, that bugs me every time I watch this movie is that if we are to take this scientist on his word, which you you normally should in, when you're watching these movies, even if they're not saying what they're not just saying is true, this movie should be called Short Faced Bear. It should not be called Grizzly. <laughs> yeah, but Grizzly doesn't sound as terrifying. Yeah, I, I mean, mean short they, but they, but short they Faced use, Bear doesn't sound use, as terrifying as, as Grizzly. They which used we're all to like, come. Eh. They used a Kodiak bear, which is a subspecies of a grizzly bear. Like that, like it's a real a grizzly bear. The real, bear. the real bear. But yeah. I'm, I'm saying that the I could have sworn that he said he it was a, a terribilis was, which I don't even know. Yeah, what that that, is, that's but, whatever but, the term was that they used. They made it up for the movie, but. But that is it. There is a Ted which I think is kind of funny because that is terrible, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. bear. But uh, but yeah, but it's you know it is they did use for the for the long shots uh, Kodiak bear. So well, no, the bear in the movie that that's playing the bear is a type of grizzly bear. I'm saying the scientist names it as something that is not a grizzly bear, and that right. just right. bugs right. me. That's um, really that's really funny. But by, by the way, two etymology things. A one thing that I, popped up when when Drew was talking though is you know the etymology of bear is also a euphemism <laughs> for just hor like it was made because people were like yo don't say the word the actual word that it's called because that's it'll summon it and that's too terrifying. Really. So we're going to call it bear. Really? Yeah. I've never heard that. That's fascinating. You know, something something that 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 um Joe Bob says in the episode, which I do think is an excellent episode, but you know, he says that he thinks this movie doesn't work as well as it could because people think bears are cute. And yeah, I guess people do, but I don't know. Like, the, yeah. you know, the bear in this movie, I think if I were to run across it, I probably would piss myself. Oh, it's like, oh, is. It was, the thing it's is, a ton, it literally is a ton of bear. Like, yeah. it's, a no, it's ton like, of yeah, it was more than. 
Yeah, but the thing is, pounds, I, th- I disagree with Joe Bra because uh, because of what you're saying is that giant bear is terrifying. But bears also are cute. That's why it's te- that's why they're teddy sure. bears. Whatever they're, they're they're soft, they're cuddly. And if it's if it looks like it's being nice, it's easy to go. Oh, especially if it's a cub, bear cub, and you don't you're not thinking about the mother or whatever. It's easy to go. Oh my gosh, that's a cute bear or whatever. Like I always hear people saying they want to see a bear and they want to take a picture of a bear. <laughs> nobody says I want to see a shark. Nobody says that. I mean, maybe like yeah, nobody says that. I, but I, people I, do around here in Colorado. Everybody wants to see a bear. They always you do. know they don't necessarily the thing- want to get close to it, but they think it's cute. I, I, to 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 your point about cubs, I think that's something they use in this movie to show that there is something wrong with yeah. the the main bear. Like right. it eats, it attacks and eats yes. a bear cub. So like, who could do that to a cute little teddy bear? You know, like that. You know, there's all sorts of things here that. You know, like the re- that's something it does better than Jaws. Actually, is that you actually have people saying that you know bears don't normally attack people, bears don't normally do this. Yeah. So, like, there's at least a discussion going on that this bear is highly abnormal. Mm. Oh, but- and the, apparently, the novel explains a lot more about why, like, theorizes why this bear might be. Anyway, go ahead. A pre- why it might be a prehistoric. No, but the, the the novel why it apparently might be, that it's, why it that might it, be wrong. Like why it might why it might have the, been. The novel theorizes, and I'm getting this from online research. I haven't found the novel, but it theorizes that the bear itself is just poorly acclimated. That it that it was a it was abnormally large, rejected by its family, kicked out, and then. Um, had an encounter with people and and so it's just a wild un, and that it had un- pain in its jaw so it was easier to eat it's just for very various very reasons but the point is that it just bothers to explain reasons why this bear is different than normal bears i mean apparently um, it's easier just to say it's a pleistocene bear and, and <laughs> you know also and in give, the novel give, give no explanation on how it's how it's still around after after millions of years sorry jason no no i just wanted to point out that that uh, first of all still around after millions of years that's also what they do in snow beast right but in the novel they uh, instead of blowing it up with a rocket propelled grenade they uh they burn it up with a flamethrower which again this is a 2000 people hunk of bear steak that they burn with a uh, flamethrower, and I, I just the the mind reels at that. Wow. Um, yeah, I know. You know, the grenade thing bugs me too. Not that you yes. know. The, the, why didn't you lead? Why you know? Why didn't you lead with that? Why, if you had a grenade launcher, <laughs> why would you start with a rocket? Rifles? It was a rocket launcher, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. a rocket yeah. launcher. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, a couple, a couple things. By the way, the the ed- bear etymology thing is not like entirely proven, but I've seen it several places. That is so really interesting. If somebody I, goes, I "Hey, actually, that. that wasn't entirely proven." That's kind of. I think there's there's some speculation to it, but I've, I've read it in a few places, animal. and so I thought it was fascinating. Uh, but also, it's it was horribilis. Uh, is mm. the is the end of the nomenclature. Ah. There. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I thought it was not ridiculous, but it sounds similar. Yeah. But it, yeah, yeah, uh, I, just, <laughs> I just misremembered. I'm sorry. Um, but the rocket well, launcher I mean, we're, thing, we're all the, the other part, the mm-hmm. other part of the this this movie, the other part that's frustrating about this movie is it probably has the most needless death. Like yes. as people are doing, like like Jaws gets a few people. This one is like, hey, well, we can't close down the park. Oh, let's land the thing. Oh, yeah, here's a guy who's up in a in a uh, you know lookout Fire tower, yeah. and somehow a, a two thousand literally two thousand pounds, a ton of bear sneaks up on him. You know, no, like, that was annoying and, me every single time. I was like, how do you not hear that? How are you like, not hearing all the puffing been, and puffing and the giant when, bear? Movie? Yeah, whenever we see the bear, he's making like he he and Jason should team up because yes. they're they're fond not, of not, wandering through the woods and and Jason. making crazy noises. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, it, but and then they land like ah, okay, we got it. let's go get our rifles. Like you have a rocket launcher. The whole point was like, and he goes, well, I don't know if we need that. And also, a rocket launcher that close is a really is a is a poor idea like it really does depend on the it, it felt like it actually felt like fighting a, a boss in resident evil because mm. you're at these close quarters with these crazy weapons yes. usually <laughs> it's like no you, a rocket launcher is meant from far away i guess this is pre-commando I, 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 well at least they didn't fire it off inside 
the helicopter, which I, I which Rocky, which which uh, uh, not I'm sorry, it was uh, Rambo. Rambo, First Blood Part Two, fires off one of these things inside a helicopter, causing nerds all over the country to raise their hand and go, "Please do not fire your bazooka inside a helicopter." <laughs> but it's just like how close and how how inept he is, it like knowing how to fire the rocket launcher. Like, well, the I'm rocket launcher is brought by off, the, but... the rocket launcher is brought by Prime, and the interesting thing about that is when he's loading it onto the helicopter you get his first you're you're like an hour into this movie and all of a sudden we're introducing new plot elements which is right. strange but he goes boy this reminds me of nam uh i i i took well, it real personal. i, I you think know. it falls in you know it, it is i thought it was really interesting to have again that's another beat yes he is, it, he is to nam as quint is to world war ii <laughs> Right. Well, that's a good point. You, you know, this okay. story is like, and and we're we're firmly we've talked about it before. We're firmly into a his whole. I mean, Nam isn't far away at this. Like, no, Nam is not even over. I mean, uh, uh, well, it's over by a year because right, the exactly. Saigon so like, was 1975. So yeah, all that stuff, and eventually where he talks about like you know, I just want to get away from it. Now here I am wanting to kill something again. This bugs me. Like his, it's just all that thousand, stuff is actually like pretty good. A, that's a thousand times better than his attempt at a spooky bear story. Can I read you? <laughs> yeah, well, that, I read you his his thing. his uh, USS Indianapolis speech? The 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 swing for the fences, Oscar bait speech that he has. Uh, here it is. It's not very long, actually. He goes, he goes. Well, let me tell you a little story, boy. A long time ago, there was a tribe of Indians up here in these woods. They were all laying down in these parts or something. I can't remember. Anyway, this herd of grizzlies smelt them out. They come in and they ate them. They tore them all up. Little children, sick ones, everybody. There were a few braves that go out on the hunt. They come back and them grizzlies turned on them. So there you got yourself a little situation. A whole herd, man-eating grizzlies, just running around, tearing up them Indians. That's that's the speech. <laughs> Which would have to, again, have to be weird bears because they're not known to be like, hey, let's all get together and go, let's let's get into a herd. I have no idea like what the hell that speech is supposed That's, to mean. They don't have herds anyway. It's, exactly. None of that makes sense. <laughs> Arthur Scott, the character goes, well, that's kind of hard to believe, Don. And he goes, unless, of course, you happen to be one of well, the Indians. He's like, oh, what do you God. know about bears then? <laughs> You're not Mr. Scott. Bear expert. You're not an Indian. <laughs> yeah, what are you cause, talking cause, about? Uh, at that point, uh, you know, Scott's not in the in there with it or is he i can't remember if he's in the helicopter at that that point i can't that's he's not there to go dude yeah, that is not bear stuff i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i don't know what anyway it, according to joe bob there it's a sleuth of bears is, is a group of bears. Of bears. well but, this but, one's but, a pretty good he's pretty stealthy so yes, that makes that's, that's <laughs> true <laughs> but but i mean structurally if i were looking at the script like if, if i had it printed out laying on my desk and i and and uh you know don says boy this reminds me of nam i don't like killing things but it's okay i guess we'll do it again that first mention of nam needs to come like in the first hour or the first 45 minutes maybe even the first half hour if you can no, he does it. he does talk about i mean he talks about regret he doesn't mention stuff. nam until uh until he's loading the rocket launcher onto the helicopter oh uh, i thought well, he had mentioned like hey i'm i'm like I fly now. Like he, I, he mentioned. I, I could have sworn. Yeah, he goes. I again. killed. I killed nearly two hundred, and he uses a slur word for Asian people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. That and was that's, I mean, even but, but that what, what though, he, like that though. is interesting because he's he's like talking about how it was you know, used we had to use. It was used yeah, to we had to use this them. so we wouldn't think of them as people, but they were people. And yeah, it's yeah. a slightly progressive reading of it. I, I agree. I'm I still want to use I, the word I, on I, this. I, well, I understand that. I don't just, know, but you know, it's it is. But I'm saying is like character building. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's character. It yeah. totally fits. I'm just like, saying yeah. that happens pretty yeah. soon before he dies, and hmm. I would have put it early in the movie so that you so that you already clock in your head. Oh, helicopter pilot was in Nam. You know, instead well, of, also yeah. since since the Korean War and since Nam, like it's it's strange to think now, but due to especially like if you were a kid and you watched Mash and stuff like that, like you know, a lot of the helicopter pilots were war pilots. Yes, and so sure. there's almost this shorthand at the time that probably if you're especially if you're like crazy, uh, you know. Out, out of control he helicopter pilot maverick helicopter pilot like you were probably in the war yeah and you know almost everybody got their like of this 
era, there was, like I said, there's almost like a shorthand of like, yeah, this, I do this civilian thing and we're not going to talk about what I, how I learned to fly a helicopter. Yeah. Right. And many well, other pilots, but helicopter seems to be the, the common one, I think. Right. Uh, well, as we, as we talked about with pop culture of, of this era, you know, like we've talked about Miami Vice before, and that's like, it's like, you know, nearly 10 years after this and still pop culture is just haunted by Vietnam. Uh, you know, I was thinking yeah. about this though. Does Quint mention he's a World War II vet and tell the the Indianapolis speech? It's an excellent point. You are correct. He does not. <laughs> Fair. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> You're exactly right. You're totally okay. right. He does. But, but you I know, know, okay, he... okay. Though while we're talking about Quint, one thing that I think is is interesting about this movie if we're looking at it through the lens of jaws i feel like the two side characters they are like the quint aspects of quint's character is kind of parsed out between like neither one of them is fully hooper and neither one of them is fully quint yeah you know true. like like their their personalities are um you know, like they both kind of have the saltiness of Quint, to be honest. Like, I mean, there's even a, a line where he says, well, you two are a lot alike, actually. And, you know, um, because the first time I watched this, I thought of the naturalist as being more of the Quint character because he's he's the one that gets brutally dispatched by well that's true bear. um you know so except for that they both do like like, like that that's the yeah other thing. but he his his death is especially brutal in the way that quint's death is okay now brutal. i think in fact now that you say that it occurs to me the naturalist is hooper and think about this that may be why they did what they did because hooper appears to remember hooper in Jaws appears to die and yes. they think he's dead. And so then you're left with just two guys and then Quint gets gets bitten in half and then it's one guy and then after that is done, Hooper pops up and goes, hey, look at me, I'm alive. They could have done that here because the naturalist dies, then it's just two and then one gets squished by the bear and then the chief blows him up. And so that would have been an opportunity for, uh, for the naturalist to pop up and go, hey, the bear buried me, but I'm okay. But that didn't happen because they, I think they may even have thought of that and then went back and go, let's give a second beat where he goes in and gets killed, I, I guess. Well, I, I, there, you know, there, there was saying that, uh, you know, more, they thought they needed more bear attacks too. So maybe they even added that in yeah. after the fact. More bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more bear it's like more beer but i i want to i want to talk about more the, the the fire tower that you mentioned that is a hilarious attack because the bear just starts taking that tower apart like hilariously shaking it and then pulling off boards and i mean this that that the bear is fascinating i also like the bit where he he tears apart the shed towards the beginning where the two women are in the shed and he, and oh no no, one they're woman. at the campsite. One, one woman goes into the shed. One woman, after her friend gets her arm torn off. Yes, good golly. Uh, gets Yeah, gets attacked in, in the shed, which is also, you know, kind of back to normal whenever. Yeah, that, was, that bugged me was, so much. What? I was like, that was very I was like, wait a minute. Why does the shed look like it's intact now that the when the ranger comes up to it, but it looked like it had been torn apart by the bear? <laughs> I mean, it's and nice I, to I, make a tableau like, like, Michael Myers. <laughs> That's true. From, the bear was like, like, it looked better when I put it together. Yeah, I, it's possible. Uh, okay, this is a reach. That it's he's smarter than the average bear. Mm. <laughs> Well, I thought that maybe um, maybe it was just the angle we were looking at the shed. One angle of the shed, it's intact, but the back it is It could be, but that's the thing. Okay, uh, this is, whenever he comes around to the side where then presumably um, it would have been torn up, he doesn't react to that. So that's the thing. So if, in fact, when he walks around to the side, there's a big hole in it, he should have gone, oh, there's a, the, you know, this whole thing's torn apart. No, there's no reaction. But he does kind of seem to step over some, like, you know, like, yeah. it, it does seem like he's stepping through something that's been torn apart, but he doesn't say anything. He never reacts to anything. He doesn't react when he finds her there. He doesn't react. And then also, the other thing I wanted to say, just that I thought of, is that it bothered me that we didn't ever find out how he found out about stuff. 
like um how did he find out because what i was talking about with the cabin tony earlier is that the mom mm -hmm. and the little boy who gets his leg torn off are in a cabin yeah. and he, how did he find out about them like did, the, did somebody hear them screaming from somewhere else and if so did that person call because the mom didn't call and the little kid didn't call i don't know there's stuff like that where i was just like i would have liked to have it, seen those, are, those are the kind of tv drama cuts that i felt like why like there's bits like that where you're just like i guess somebody called them because yeah because when we see the next time we see it after that attack which is horrifying uh yeah is and in fact they even make it like they double down like look at this little boy oh his cute bunny oh dear lord look yeah. what the bear did like uh the next you know when we see it next like ambulance is already there like everybody everybody's there i'm saying how did they find out so yeah. well, I they, they the skip all called, that exposition but, i don't know so, no, the I mean, mom died. Yeah. The mom was killed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Well, our dying they, breath. They, they skip it. You just take Jeez. it for granted that somebody did. Somebody and... heard. Somebody heard a massive. Like again. Yeah, maybe there's like a cabin next door or something. He wasn't being as stealthy as when he snuck up on the fire tower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or the waterfall, or I, any of the other. Yeah. I want to mention Christopher George, who is our main guy, Mike, um, who is our romantic lead. Although they get rid of his romantic storyline like as soon as the action really starts uh right. his name is christopher george he was in a show called the rat patrol uh which is a favorite apparently of um of our friends at the monster movie happy hour so uh david geister is a is a fan of of rat patrol uh and so i don't know much about him drew you said that he looked like a superhero and i think that's true yeah i think he looks like i think he very specifically looks like hal jordan he is the most square-jawed of square-jawed men. I mean, he really does look like Hal, Hal Jordan. Yes. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so he uh, he was very active. And Richard Jekyll, that guy we've had on in a movie that we've covered on the show before. And I can't figure out what. But uh, Richard Jekyll is the blonde naturalist who wears furs and, and everybody regards him as, as kind of crazy. Um, he was in 310 to Yuma and The Naked and the Dead and a whole bunch of Westerns, you know, besides those. And, well, Naked and the Dead's a, a war movie. So war movies and Westerns were his thing. But I could have sworn, I think he may have been like in a Godzilla movie or maybe Gargant the War of the Gargantuas. I don't know. I, I, I will I will figure this out. And I haven't I haven't looked it up. But by the way, um, Christopher George would have been great starring opposite James Garner. Like they could have had that 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 a vibe. I think. Oh, absolutely! Were, like that would have been a, an interesting. Do you get the impression that men there? This well, I was about to say that this is a different that like you have different kinds of manly men in 1976 than you do today. But it occurs to me that we had you know we watched Deathmaster. There were plenty of like like hippies. There's Plenty of playing with gender but this guy comes from just he's cut from a different mold like like you know he's a square jawed dude who's going to come after you with a knife it, it's it's uh i miss well i mean it, like it, you know these are also like working class guys doing working class yeah. job yeah like it yeah. wouldn't really make sense to have um hippies in this yeah <laughs> Is anything well, like, other than people smoking pot in the woods? I mean, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Richard Dreyfus, remember in in Jaws, is out of place because he's he's a bespectacled sort of dweeb who is mainly a you know he, he's a scientist as well. This guy is the, the Richard Jekyll character is the equivalent of that, but it is still somehow different, mainly because he's he's, he's eccentric. But, yeah, yeah. He's, he's wearing he's, furs and eating sandwiches in inappropriate places that makes yeah. him. <laughs> that's the that's their shorthand. Like, I yeah, I, I mean, here. yeah. But he also comes across as somebody you know. The, you you have to be a, a specific kind of rugged to be able to go up into the mountains and survive on your mm -hmm. own for X amount of time. Yeah. Like he, you know, he's whereas like Hooper is a guy with like all the cool toys and you know yeah. all the like they're different kinds of of you know scientist characters yeah. they're almost two two uh different sides of the coin because like all the the guys in this are kind of different shades of of pulpy 
you know? Like, yeah, no, well said. It's like there's a Venn diagram and there's like like scientist rugged and scientist indoors, you know, and 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 so forth. Non-scientist indoors, non-scientist rugged. Non-scientist indoors is the uh, the guy who runs the park and doesn't want to shut it down until a kid loses his leg. And so then he's like, all right, fine. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the most he brings in all the stupid hunters who don't know what they're doing yes so, you know that is, all of that stuff is so much everything involving that guy is a jaws beat and there's no way it's not that is by the way <laughs> i would i would add if you're making this like 70s this guy uh expendables like yes. if you want to just line everybody up and in, like into like a, a type yeah and you'd be like who's what if you want to be really confused you'd put like christopher george uh james garner uh <laughs> warren oates yes and, and claude akins like if you just want like if you want to cut from the cloth like these four guys like which one's with the guy which you one's know? the tough one? Which one? Yeah, like, like you would have to, like, because all they all look different, but they have that. They all have the vibe, like, especially yes. like, like I'm, I'm talking, um, Warren Oates from from Race with the Devil. Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a Christopher George, <laughs> James Garner, Warren Oates, Claude Aikens movie. You just like, I, I'm so confused. Who's, yeah, who's what, where. Like they are, because one is the that would have been that this and that was this era of like, they, but they're all they're all cool and great. Uh, but that was just like those actors had had that vibe, and I think yeah. you know in this movie are are and you know it is interesting. Like it's weird that they drop the um they drop the the restaurant love story. interest kind of. Yeah. In fact, they, I guess they supposedly, according to Joe Bob, they, they had a sex scene that they cut out because they needed more bear time. Oh, uh, I missed that. I guess you're right. Yeah. So, like, that was that was actually one you know, of the fascinating things. Uh, that's but, ridiculous. Like, that tells me that they cut a lot of shit. If that's the uh, case. I mean, that, possibly, yeah. yeah. But, like, his the scene where he's like, I just feel, like, so much less, like, I, I feel so terrible. Like, I'm not doing anything I can't. Yeah. I, I, his that scene is like pretty good, and you don't, and you also you don't see that a lot with with the action man kind of storylines. Yeah. Um. And but also, you know, in Jaws, we do get some of that regret too. So like, why why wouldn't they close the beaches, kind of thing? But well, yeah, uh, you it, know, I really did it, like it, his 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 where we get this humanizing moment where he's like, I can't do anything. Yeah, I'm just sitting. Here. By the way, if you look up Christopher George as well, he he did some uh, evidently did some beefcake modeling. Oh yeah. I, he did well. They talked about that on Joe Bob. Christopher George did Playgirl. Oh, okay. yeah. Christopher George did Playgirl, and I think Jekyll did one of the other one, one of the Playgirl um, competitors. That's I have no idea what it was called. But if you want to, to Drew's point, like if you wanted somebody super heroic, like you're totally right because he's he's ripped. <laughs> yeah, you know we don't see that in the in his like park ranger persona, but yeah, you know he could he could definitely have have been. Yeah, superhero material. So, all right. I don't feel like we're, I mean, I, I don't feel like we're missing much. So we should probably get our final thoughts. Is there anything that you guys feel like we want to touch on that we haven't talked about? Throw it out there. I mean, I think that, I think the fact that, the, I think Drew, we talked a little bit about the bear, but also the, you know, the net, the kind of weird size changes that happen. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I guess like sometimes, sometimes it's like, a bear they flew in and yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's the kodiak bear sometimes it's a black bear sometimes it's the a person in a, a couple times it's a or people two people in, in a suit yeah <laughs> and there was a appropriately enough for a jaws ripoff there was an animatronic bear that apparently right. didn't work huh. very well yeah, uh, oh my god i just i still i still just like and also just how like it it is a shame that it's slightly lower budget made that they, they they it seems like they could have done a few more terrifying things with because I mean a, a a twenty foot fifteen to twenty foot tall bear is and bears are terrifying anyway when they're attacking yeah. but you could it seems like you could do a lot of more like it could have been also like a you know way more destructive way more terrifying um had we had we had the slightly bigger budget but it does again like we said knock a knock the head off of a horse apparently just... a, a a bear being super powerful can actually behead something by whacking it in the head i don't know about a horse though 
because he got that enormous neck. So who knows? But I mean, I don't know. Like a like a giraffe can kick a lion's head off. So supposedly. Yeah. So who? I mean, I I, I found it. I found bears it are, are plausible. extremely strong. I don't know yeah. that it would be as clean as yeah. right. the this movie makes it out. But bears are very very strong. Yeah, has yeah. to be said. Yeah, this is. And you know all the I I do I do think that you know despite the the kind of almost beat for beat Jaws part like the the gore and the the terrifying parts are legit terrifying even if it does things like that I I think it's I I kind of also wish they would have played just a little bit more with this the the smartness of the bear because they allude to it too they're like oh it led us around like it's it's smart when they want it to be and then it's dumb. Or, or more bear like when they yeah they're like oh well it's just doing circles that's how bears work like i kind of yeah, yeah wish they'd stuck with the like this bear has been around it knows what's up it kind of it because they kind of portray it more like it sometimes it's more like orca or the or the yeah. uh you know jaws four shark which you know that there's your perfect eco-terrorism like if i was gonna make a uh venture brothers reference like kind of the way venture brothers does things it would be a bunch of super smart animals yes <laughs> so it's well, like the the they they've teamed the orca and you know orca and jaws four jaws and this bear are all teamed up with maybe a couple of others some of the frogs and frogs and that would be my <laughs> remember that jaws four jaws team. was was the way it was because it was a voodoo shark. Um, yeah, but 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 it's smart. Like it knows yes. how to track people. What I what I'm saying is that makes that's plausible <laughs> to me that all the smart creatures would get together and form some eco terror group. You know what you just said about it. It knows how to track people. Just made me think. Like suddenly, I was thinking of the shark as Quint going to the other animals. You all know me. Mm. You know how I make a living. Exactly. <laughs> I can, I can find. Saying. I can find this chief. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly. Nice. Um, all right, let's get our let's get our final thoughts on this thing, and then come around for endorsements. Drew, I don't know, have we done justice to Grizzly? I mean, I could talk to, about this movie for probably four hours, um, right. but uh, you know, I think we've I think we've been fair, and uh, you know, I, I I I think we've been fair to the bear. And, uh, you know, like Orca, fun conversation. I'm looking forward into getting into one or two more of these because I'm enjoying the uh, kill all the humans vibes. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. Excellent. Thank you. Julia, what about you? Yeah, it's definitely a fun conversation. I mean, I, I hate, you know, I, I hate to nitpick on something like Tony says, you know, that people worked hard on but there it's just it is a lot of fun to to kind of find the little you know poke holes and things um but it is it's very it's a good time for sure cool tony yeah i, I think it's it's a really good animal attack movie as far as it, it's a b movie it's a you know it's an indie film like yeah you know that's and you like you said, i'd be it proud made to have made money it, back I mean, honestly like, yeah big time uh the cast is actually like i dig the cast and and yeah they're they're kind of all along those beats, but it's not perfect. But I think, you know, I saw somebody mention recently, like some movie that they're like, this is the worst movie. I'm like, you have not. And it was something that was pretty tame. Right. You know, like I, you haven't watched enough movies. <laughs> right. I feel that way all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is the worst. Like, I, don't know. I mean, how do you mean that? I don't know. Maybe it seems like you just haven't watched enough movies, but yeah. you know, I, I think in the grand scheme of things, there's, you know, there's a lot of this in this kind of, they're, this kind of ratchets up the animal attack angle of of this era. Um, you know, people going, "Whoa, okay, well, we I thought we were looking at Jaws. Maybe we we're looking. Maybe let's look more at Grizzly, like uh, you know, the scrappy <laughs> version of this, not done by Spielberg, right?" Um, yeah. yeah, I think I think it was cool to watch it. Um, I'm, you know, maybe also fascinated to go finally see more than clips of Grizzly Two, which has its own just bizarro history of you know not being released until recently. There's a whole thing with Grizzly Two. <laughs> uh that that involved like hey we took all the financing and left <laughs> and then yes it you know came back there's a whole thing but uh you know made me kind of want to watch a few more animal attack movies as well because i hadn't seen I, I watched a bunch of them a while back but maybe it's time to you know with with this and orca like i think this is a good retrospective i i think it's solid if and you know look if the if one of the worst things is some of the parts are a little disjointed and you're following the pattern of of uh similar movies i mean look 
<laughs> to be fair, that's the Asylum. That's their whole like shtick, right? Yes. Yes. Atlantic Rim, the Dunes. You know, like right. you name it, there's a there's a version of that. So uh this is you know, if it's worse sins are those, and arguably I would watch this over a bunch of that kind of ironic agree. stuff. The mockbusters, yeah. 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 I would I would I because this comes from a place of like, hey, let's just go make this this indie film. Uh I dig it, man. I yeah, I think it's solid. Awesome. Uh I I have nothing to add to that other than I can't wait to come back with more animal attack movies. Maybe, uh, you know, I, we haven't talked about what's next, but we could go in the direction of some of the eco animal attack movies like, you know, like the one with Jason Robards and all the and all the frogs, I think. Or, you know, we could there's there's that movie with worms, which I think was called. What was that? Was that Slither? I can't remember. Squirm. Was it Squirm? Squirm. Anyway, uh, so many possibilities, so little time, but we'll we'll be back soon with something. All right. I'm dying to know what you guys have to endorse, um, like what you've been watching this week, like what's what's going on. And, and while you're saying that, I will think if I have anything to endorse myself. Um, so, Drew, do you have anything to endorse? Yeah. Um, so I mentioned that I got a bunch of horror Blu-rays for for Christmas and I'm slowly making my way through them. Um, one of them was, uh, speaking of, uh, I guess not quite the same kind because it's a completely made up animal, but, uh, it is animal on human vi violence of a sort. I, one of them was the Arrow uh, 4K release of Trimmers, the, uh, early nineties cult classic, uh, with a beautiful cover uh, by our own Matt Frank and oh, yeah. a a whole lot of awesome special features, and the movie looks uh, beautiful, all cleaned up. So um, I greatly enjoyed watching it again. I mean, it's a movie that I tend to bust out. It's it's a comfort food movie, but um, you know, this is the nicest it's looked in a long time. So. I I I really enjoyed revisiting it in this new packaging. So uh if you are a fan of Tremors, I highly recommend hunting down this release because it's it's the nicest the movie has looked probably since it was brand new. And again, lots of great special features. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Julia, what do you have for us? Oh man, I love a good um Jason Statham action movie and The Beekeeper is no exception. It was really, <laughs> yeah. really fun time. Um, just watching him just, just unabashedly kill the crap out of a bunch of bad guys. <laughs> it's a really fun movie. Um, and uh, and then I've been watching The Diplomat on Netflix, which is also um, it's it's different. It's not like action. It's more of a kind of a political thrillish kind of like Madam Secretary or something. But that's been really I'm enjoying that a lot. So those are mine. Wonderful, thank you, Tony. What about you? <clears throat> um, I'm trying to think. I don't know where this this week this week has escaped me now that I try to parse through what I what I've seen. Um, I've been catching up on a lot of just random like just going through TV and kind of random stuff. Uh, I'm still, I, I'm really just enamored with this season of um, True Detective. Uh, I've seen a lot of people complaining about it, but I don't know. I don't know. It works for me. Your I mileage will be I've only heard good things so far. I mean, so. You know, man. The only <laughs> negatives I've heard are for people who don't realize that it wasn't actually originally a True Detective story. It was just, it was, it was its own thing. And then they kind of adopted it into the true detective world but if you stop thinking of it as oh that's it's so different from the other true detective stories how it's different just, how it's, just I, not, I, I it's more kind of like supernatural and a little weird it's not the, the, the first the season's first got some I, weird yeah i don't know i don't know I don't, i'm just saying that's what i've heard is that's the I, and i've seen people gripe about like the posters on the wall were maybe ai or they were and then like and then the director will go hey uh we thought about that here's why and people go she's just making things that like i don't know what I, her movies like well Tiger's there's also misogyny awesome. that always always well plays part. exactly like and then there's like people didn't uh you know i've seen things like <laughs> they don't always they're you can't always see their breaths like i don't know what you want me to say we filmed it <laughs> up there in the north like i don't i don't should i add 
but it's just like stuff but i i still enjoy it the other i will say the other thing i've kind of been enjoying uh i had heard about the manga i hadn't uh really read it but um there's a there's a anime on netflix that's being released weekly called uh delicious in dungeon and uh it's one of the the, the newer releases that i really enjoyed it's about a group of uh it feels the reason i like it is it feels like a dungeons and dragons campaign like i could see it being <laughs> this way uh where um, they go, they they find a dungeon in the same way that you would find a dungeon in Dungeons and Dragons. The dungeon kind of appears and people are going in trying to seek their fortune. And uh, they realize like, hey, they're always hungry and that's putting them off as they go to try to rescue and resurrect uh, the, the fighter character's sister who was lost in the dungeon. And they decide they, they're trying to figure out how to cook all the monsters, basically. <laughs> like... Well, if you cook a scorpion, a giant scorpion this way, and here's this mushroom creature or giant plant, like they're basically starting this recipe. So it's like a cooking show meets dungeon adventures. And it feels really close to like, like I could see a campaign. Like if you based your campaign on that, it's actually pretty hilarious. It feels that way. And that I, I had heard it was pretty good. And I, I just kind of, I dig the vibe of it. So uh, I think three episodes are out right now. Uh, I kind of want to read the manga. But um, I was surprised, you know, I kind of just put it on as a lark because I'd heard good things. And then it really did kind of bring me back to old school, you know, playing Dungeons and Dragons and just some of the random kind of stuff that would happen if you as you play. So and I think the combination of like cooking show, I think they, I think in Japan they may have even made a cookbook, if I'm not mistaken, which makes sense. But uh, <laughs> I, it's, I think it's a cool premise. And it was it was I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. And I'll be definitely watching the the rest of the season nice uh i have discovered one interesting thing which is uh the this series of youtube videos called audiobooks for the damned so this is something that was that was recommended by scream screen here in in denver because julie and i went to see the eyes of laura mars and uh the guy who is the host um mr garcia he actually was the narrator okay audiobooks for the dam they take they take novelizations of movies and they choose and different people read the novelization as a youtube video it takes like five hours and so you have all these audiobooks of like the novelization of terminator or the novelization of the eyes of laura mars or or, or what have you and it's it's just really neat. I mean, I, you know, so like if you want to read or if you want to hear somebody read the novelization of Halloween 2 or Return of the Jedi or License to Drive or Batman Returns, it's here. I, so I think I've said, but I have a bunch of those. I have them in a, like, I need to, to get them out, but like. Oh, you should, you should I, do a Pinterest page of just your novelization. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, I had like, cause at the, like again, I think we talked about this, but at the time, that was if you didn't have a VCR, that's the way I relive movies. Yes. Like, and I would get and I would pick them up, you know, I would find them at half price stores and stuff like that, especially when I was visiting. Like, Bryan College Station had a really good one. So I have like the novelization for Annie, the movie, and like, you know, I have ran, e. like e. the E.T. Uh, Return, uh, Return to Oz alien clash of the titans a lot of them split in the center though because they had pictures yes. from the but uh it also i think we've talked about it before too like yeah, i had the empire now that you there. say that i had the empire strikes back when i remember the oh one. i had that Did you really? yeah, i had yeah. all those um i like i think i have like four different versions of empire <laughs> um yeah. one that's illustrated but like the the thing was because they need to get them out at the same time as the movie as a tie-in they would often have the uh the director's cut so like all the stuff in aliens like newt's family and the miniguns all, all the stuff that you didn't see until you could get it on dvd and get the director's cut or the yeah. added footage that's all in the novelization same with alien actually the the part where they find dallas and all of that because they're often the, the script so I, you know, I didn't know that was a director's cut I was just like oh man they, they just added these new scenes but they were in the script right uh in yep. fact the the there's a nightmare uh, on Elm Street when that's one two and three and the uh part three is like way different I guess it's the original script well or, or something called... or a version of it so uh I think that that's a cool that's a cool YouTube site because I think a lot of those novelizations had all this stuff that you know at the time we would eventually see some of that footage but it was cool to read and you know I was a super avid reader so i i read i you know tore through a bunch of those books <laughs> i'm really intrigued by this they're called audiobooks for the damned 
definitely awesome. check it out. Um, I don't, uh, I don't think they've they've had any recently, but there's a bunch of them. So you know, and they're there for others. So Keith, uh, Keith, I Marcia, need to. I, I, I really, I really do need to scan in the Choose Your Own Adventure Stay in Live book. That's a, that's a great idea. Oh, please do. Uh, oh, they have Fright Night. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, cool. everybody. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks, and um, uh, we don't know what our next Animal Attack movie is. If you have any recommendations, we're totally interesting. Is a Kingdom of the Spiders? I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do, but we'll be we'll be back. Um, thank you so much. Come to the Facebook page. Let us know what you're thinking. And uh, guys, it was wonderful, wonderful to hang out with you. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.